So continuing here on the handout, <clears throat> uh, I'm mentioning with organization, you want to add, you want to use categories and tags. You don't want to overuse them. The point of organizing that is for the people to, to find your content. If you're putting your content, one post in seven categories and ten categories, well then you're not quite organizing because people will still be able to search and uh, find your content even if you don't put it in a category. So then you say, well, why do we even use categories if they're going to be able to find it through search? Well, a person can search and find a category, and then everything in that category will show up to them. And so if they chose to look at that category, then it'll show all articles in that category. So again, it's about having people find your content, about organizing, and that helps your SEO. Related to that organization is what I mentioned here about the author page. On our particular site at the moment, I'm the only administrator and creator on this blog. I'm the only one that has the ability to write anything. But if I added more people, they could also add to the, to the site, and there'll be a field here where I can mark who wrote that. I can mark Victor wrote it, John wrote it, Samantha wrote it. And the point of marking your content to see who wrote it is because then we can get a list, just like a list of that category. If, I, if a person clicks on that category, they will see all of the articles in that category. If I have different authors, a person can click on the writer's name and get a list of all of the writers of what they've, what they've written. I'll show you that an example in a moment because we don't have more than one writer on our site. But again, the point of that is organization. All their posts will be linked together if we have an author page. So first I'll show you how to set your author page and then I'll show you what it looks like. Um, let's make sure we've saved a draft. And then on the left side, um, if you hover over users, click my profile. This is your author page. Now mine has my icon there because I've already set that up. If you want to set your own, your own up, you have to click the link to uh, to see how it's to how to do it. Uh, but you've got then a space to fill in your name, however you want to be seen on the site, and all of these other things that you could fill in. The point of filling this in, again, that if you've got this all filled in and you do guest blogging, this information could then lead back to your website from that other person's site. If you guest blog over there and you've got an author page filled in, and on my author page, I'm going to have a link back to my website or my Skype or my Yahoo or whatever. That's going to link back to my website, back to my YouTube account or whatever. And um, that could get you more traffic, especially if you're guest blogging on a site that already has a lot of traffic. So it's sort of like word of mouth. So I'll show you an example of that right here. Um, I like to read a variety of um, um, investing uh, blogs and such. So uh, InvestorJunkie.com, they have uh, all of these articles, uh, pretty useful ones. So I'll show you here on a real world example. I'm not affiliated with this, or my company's not affiliated with this at all, but I just like to use this as an example. So InvestorJunkie.com. Um, uh, some of the best advice that I've ever read about uh, retirement and so forth is, you know, st uh, start early and save often. So if you haven't started early for your retirement, you can still do it now. You just have to save often. So there's lots of great advice about investing and retirement and savings all over the place. This is one of the ones that I like. 
Uh, so over at Investor Junkie, they've got a, a whole section on articles on the top right corner. That's the blog. The blog doesn't literally need to be called the blog or my blog or company blog. It can be named anything like articles. It could be called the kitchen. Let's say I've got a restaurant and I'm blogging. I could call it the kitchen or notes from the kitchen. You know, anything creative like that. The, the only thing though is about the address they've got the the address is actually investorjunkie.com slash articles it would be a little better if it was investorjunkie.com slash blog but they've built up enough presence on social media they've got twitter they've got facebook etc etc that some of these little like that little detail is is negated from being on social media but you you could still call your section notes from the kitchen but the address up on top there should still be blog. And so notice here, categories. If I want to learn about credit cards, investing, taxes, I can click on a category and all of the articles in order will be shown to me uh, on, on that topic, that category. That's one of the points of using categories. In a sense, they've also used tags, not that obviously, but they've used tags uh, by months and years. But here, they started in 2009 and they've been blogging since then. And if I click on show me the articles from January 2015, it then shows you January 2015. These are the blog posts from January of this year. And so, something that might catch my attention, um, how to correctly open and set up an online brokerage account. So I click on an article. This has got a heading, of course, heading one, like, I, like I've said. It's got some text. Here's a heading two, nine simple steps to open an online brokerage account. And then right here is the nine steps. So this is a list, a numbered list. Maybe I already know some of these, such as choose your broker. I already know that. Next one. Decide what type of account. Okay, I'll read that one. I can read that. Um, it's got uh, the ways to share. If I'm on Facebook, I can e easily share to Facebook. I can email this to a friend. I have more. Under more, I could print it. So this is from my, from my tips here, under promoting section, social for them let people easily share your content. Then this author is Miranda Market. Marquit. Miranda Marquit. So um, she also tagged it stockbrokers and in the category investing. So again if I click on this tag of stockbrokers it'll show me these articles Trade King promotional code 10 criteria to consider when choosing the right broker. Robinhood App Review, Motif Investing Review, Barron's 2015 survey reveals the best online brokers. So this is a topic then that all of these articles are related to. That's why when we create our content, we want to use tags and categories. And then getting back to my concept here then of the author page. You should see that at the end of this particular article, Miranda wrote this, and if I click on her name, it goes to her author page, a little bit about herself. She probably wrote it herself, maybe someone of the company wrote it for her, uh, but there's something about her, and then more importantly, a link to her website. This is driving traffic to her online presence there on Google. It could be to her website, it could be to her blog, it could be to her Twitter, it could be wherever she chooses, wherever you choose. So when you're setting up your author page, that's why it's asking you so much right here. It's asking, uh, fill in your email, your AOL chat, your Jabber, Skype, these things that I've never heard of, your work phone, your mobile phone, your website. 
down here. Because if you guessed blog, this will, this will follow you. This online presence of yours will attach itself uh, to that guest blog, and then when you guest blog there, they'll have links back to your site, giving you traffic, giving you backlinks. This author page, what it also has, and this is pretty automatic, it's built into WordPress, it will then also, um, and then it should also show you other articles um, that she has written. How to keep your financial information secure. How to successfully invest in real estate with Brandon Turner. Inheriting a Roth IRA, problems you need to know. And so she's written a variety of articles here. Doesn't tell me how many, but I can see there's apparently 15 pages of articles she's written. So the point of this is um, she's got some good SEO. She's building an audience. She's writing a lot of articles on a variety of topics related to finance. She's got a link back to her website. She's got a um, traffic. Right here, she's got half a million views on her website right here. It's a lot of traffic. She's got 3,000 followers. And so if you set this up, this will help your, your SEO. So articles and blogs are interchangeable in the terminology? Not quite. The blog is the whole thing, the whole website, and the article is the individual piece, the individual story. But I might say blog post sometimes. Blog post is synonymous with article. So if you, uh, to distinguish a, a website from a blog, would a blog be more like a series of articles as opposed to a, more, a website which is a more complete set of information? Yeah, that's a good way to say it. A blog really focuses on articles and updates and so forth, and a website doesn't have to. So this particular site, then Investor Junkie, it's kind of a hybrid because it's got a section on articles or blogs and then a section on reviews, investing secrets, getting started, and I'm sure they're going to sell you about their own uh, personal finance gurus and such. But um, they, um, they have these articles, these blog posts, and you get a... in this particular case it's a little limited, but oftentimes you see you see the article, you see the post, and a little bit of text as a preview. I can show you a better example on my company's blog right here, pmdinteractive.com slash blog. We've got some articles, and then there's a snippet. So you might want to look at this, pmdinteractive.com slash blog. I'm writing an expanded three-part series on that handout that I gave you, um, it's, I'm making it a little bit longer, and you'll be able to read the longer version if you go to our blog. Part 2 has been published recently. Part 1 was before that. Part 3 is coming up. It basically takes this handout that I gave you and expands a little bit more, gives you more resources, because you can only fit so much on one, one handout. So pmdinteractive.com slash blog. And notice on the blog screen, it might show the name of the uh, the post, a picture to catch your attention, a little bit of a snippet of text, and then read more. You can click to read more. The rest of it is here. This should look familiar. So, um, oops, I have to fix that broken picture. But, um, the point here is that I'm just get, I'm just show, we're showing a snippet, and the person will then click to read what they're most interested in, or they'll skip what they're not interested in. That's fine. That's why on my notes here I say number ten: read more. On your blog page, only include a snippet of the post, perhaps with an image, and the option for people to read more, also known as continue reading. On the post itself, set up a way for related posts to be visible. Um, so what I'm saying on this first thought here is, 
let's set this so that only a preview appears on the blog post, not the whole 500 words. Because if all your blog posts are 500 words, and they're all visible on your blog page, it's going to scroll and scroll and scroll, and people are going to see a huge wall of text that they don't want to read. So I'm going to show you instead, we can set the, the button that says Read More. Let's go back to your WordPress, and let's go back to your Posts screen. Click on Posts. Remember we had saved and we went over to the profile. Let's go back to Posts, All Posts. And here you'll see um, here you'll see the post will work and it says draft. If you hover your mouse over the post, you should see edit. You also have some other options. Preview, what does it currently look like? <coughs> Trash, delete it, I'm not happy with it. Quick edit lets you change a couple of things about it, like um, tags and categories and such, but it doesn't let you actually edit the paragraph <coughs> and the pictures. <coughs> So let's go back to posts and let's click on edit. Edit your current post. This is my current post here. It starts off here. Here's my advice for you. Um, what I would recommend before you start your main article, back up and write a small snippet, a teaser, of what this post is about. So I'm going to say here, uh, learning about blogging as a restaurant tour can be difficult. Restaurant tour. Can be difficult. Let us make it easy for you. So that's the snippet that is going to appear on the blog screen. And then if they want to read the whole article, then they can click to read more. To actually make it work that way, read more. You can write your, your sentence or paragraph, whatever, and then press enter. And then you've got this button, the third one from the right. To me, it looks like the little center divider on a road, but that's supposed to be two pages divided. Insert, read, more tag. So you write your snippet, you write your preview, your teaser, and then on a new line, you add insert, read, more tag. And it writes some code for you and makes a link for you so that when someone visits your blog post, your blog screen, they get that preview above the fold, so to speak, above the, the more. If they do want to read more, they will automatically get a button that says read more. Click that, and then it shows you the full article, the full post. you won't see that read more if you're if you're viewing the whole uh, post like this let's say a person visits and reads this post they're not going to see the 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 read more anywhere they would see it on this screen here i'm not sure why it's not showing up here but they would see it on this screen the blog post screen, not the screen when you actually when you actually read it. But this is a little uh, a little tip here. Again, uh, people don't read everything like they used to. They don't read a whole page nonstop like we used to. Uh, people skim content. People want to get a preview and then decide to read more. So that's how we add it pretty easily. We say break break my article, break my post right here. So you just click and add that read more tag, the third one from the end.
So let's say I'm getting pretty close to ending my uh, my post. Um, I followed most of the tips here. A couple of other screens that that we can look at within our within WordPress I haven't mentioned here yet. Format. Well, this is sort of also a way, kind of, to make categories because I can write different kinds of blog posts. Let's say a blog post that focuses on a quote, or a blog post that focuses on a gallery of pictures, or an image, and so forth. So I can also set that this post is that kind of format, link, quote, etc. And this is another way to organize your content, but it's also a way to display your content most effectively. If your blog post has a bunch of pictures and, and little text, it might be a good idea to set the format of that post as a gallery. So WordPress shows it most effectively. If you don't change this, it's no big deal. Standard works really well. But if, you're, if your post is a certain kind of post, it might be a good idea to select these different format types. I didn't mention yet featured image in the corner. That one depends on your theme. WordPress lets you change the design of your blog pretty easily. And so if you want to change designs, that's called changing your theme. And depending on your theme, it may or may not use this featured image. Kind of like how on my company site here, we have this picture attached to the to the article. Notice when you actually read the article, the picture is, is at the bottom and large. Right there. So that was a featured image, but not every blog post uh, actually shows it. Uh, I'm sorry, not every theme shows the featured image. That's why I didn't really mention it, but what you can always do is add a featured image and see how it looks with your particular theme. So why does the featured image show up if you don't have it on the blog, or you're telling it from this blog post to set that as a featured image? Well, you won't be able to answer that until you, you kind of have to add it and then check the result, because sometimes that featured image may show up on your blog page, uh, sometimes it's part of some sort of carousel, so I can't quite answer it. It really depends on your particular theme, how it shows it. Okay. Send trackbacks. Trackbacks are a way to inform legacy blog systems that you've linked to them. If you link other WordPress sites, they'll be notified automatically using pingbacks. No other action necessary. So again, that's the point of my, from my website linking to some other website because then they would get the notification. And since most of the websites nowadays, the, the, the majority are using WordPress, there's not too much of a necessity for this trackback. So I never really address it. I don't have to deal with it much, really. You won't have to deal with it. So then we've got slug. That's another thing you don't really have to deal with. Slug is just the, another name for your, for your address. If you go to back to the very top, I wrote this title, The Restaurant Owner's Guide to Blogging. And it automatically created this address, the name of my WordPress, the date that it was published, and then it took what I wrote as the title and put it into the address. So the full address, also known as the permalink, of this post is that huge address there. If I wanted to change that, I can. That part is also known as the slug. So if I wanted to change that part of the address, the slug, I can either edit it at the top or within the box here of slug. And if I wanted to call this how to blog, I could. The thing about the slug is no spaces and it's recommended uh, dashes, not underscores. 
no spaces, no special characters, so apostrophes, exclamation points, and such. It's recommended lowercase and dashes. Numbers are okay, but letters, lowercase, <coughs> dashes. That's what you want for your for your slug. Again, usually you don't have to write anything here on the slug. It will fill itself in when you write the title. See, it wrote the restaurant owner's guide to blogging. Maybe I don't want it to say the word the. I can take that out. I can go to the top here and click on the yellow or click on the word edit and I can edit it so it simply says restaurant restaurant guide to blogging whatever I want. If I'm shortening it I can do that, I can make it longer but the reason I'm shortening it is because I'm focusing on more of the keywords. Um, people that are in the, in, in the restaurant business, this is a guide, and it's about blogging. So here I edited the slug. Back at the bottom, um, these two options are on, allow comments and allow trackbacks and pingbacks. Again, I want to leave both of those on, but especially the trackbacks and pingbacks, I want my site to notify the other site once I link to them. Comments, it's up to you to decide if you want comments or not, because remember, if you don't turn on moderate, you might get a lot of spam. So we saw last week how to set that option. WordPress is really nice because it remembers different versions of what you wrote, different revisions. It's listing it down here under revisions, and at the top right corner, if you go back here under revisions. Not only does it tell you when you edited your page and who edited the page if you have more than one user, but it will let you revert. It'll let you go back like an undo to something that you wrote a month ago not just at that moment undo, it lets you undo back several versions. Yes? Does chat differ from comments? Yes, if you're looking under format over here of chat, that's more like an active type of chat, whereas comments uh, are, are, are not immediate and active. Likes and shares, those are both on. Yes, I want people to like my content. I want people to share my content. If I don't, I can turn those off. But that might be detrimental. I do want people to easily be able to share. As I said earlier, social media for them. That's it. You just turn that on and people will be able to share your stuff on their social media. Yes. Is there any SEO benefit to any one format over another that you're aware of? No, because it would be an artificial thing. If, if, if it was that the video format is the most SEO, then you're going to force every one of your posts to be SE, uh, video, which won't make sense. But maybe you're only publishing video content. That's fine, but then like I'm saying, then you're limiting your content. If you're only doing video, you also need to do other kinds of content. So there's no one best one. It's whatever works best with your content. So before we leave the image uh, altogether, how, how do you get your um, text to wrap around the image? If you want text that, you know, where you want a, a photograph, say in the, a large photograph, and you want the text to wrap around it, like an article. Well, that was when you had selected your text and clicked the left align. Well, well left align brings it all the way to the left, but goes right on top of the text. We'll have lab time soon and then we can look at it because you might be doing something slightly off, but lab time's coming up soon, I can help you out. Um, at this point, 
let's say that I've written this, I've taken some time, well, I'm going to publish it now. So uh, if I had followed my advice here, I should have a pretty good blog post. I don't have to follow every single point, but I'm going to now select to publish. If you don't have the option to publish, again, that probably means you haven't verified your, your email. I published it, and then I get this, which I think is kind of annoying, but it might be helpful as a beginner. I published it, and it says, you published your second blog post. Edit it, new post. I kind of don't like this because it really breaks my chain of thought. Uh, it only shows up the first maybe two or three times you publish a blog post, but you should be able to close that little X, I think. Yeah. Nope, that does that. So see, it kind of really goes weird. So you, wherever you're at, you want to go back to WP Admin. Yeah, but if we don't have this hosted right now, what is it actually doing when you publish? It's just finalizing it. Is that what it means? No, we do, we are we do have hosting. We have the free hosting. For example, I've got my my site as vsites.wordpress.com. So I would like vsites.com. That's when I would go to Bluehost and buy vsites.com domain and the hosting. But we're getting free hosting and a free domain name from wordpress.com. The downside is my name is attached to their name. And then also I don't have some of the features like plugins. But this is published. This is real. Someone could go to your address, whatever your address is up there, and actually start to see it. So in a sense, you could run a website right here totally for free. You have some limitation, but you can still start to use WordPress right now and get an online presence. Eventually, well, we might decide I do need those plugins because I want to add a shopping cart or I want to add a live chat feature, tech support or something. I would have to go over to HostGator or wherever and buy an account there and set up my blog there. And you'll say, well, I put in all of this time and effort in working on my WordPress.com site and I'm starting over at GoDaddy? No, because I'm going to show you this. You can take your existing WordPress.com and if you hover over Tools, we have Export. So this will let you take your site from WordPress.com to GoDaddy, to Bluehost. Because when you're over on GoDaddy, uh, or Bluehost, how do you think then you proceed? Import. So once you've set up a basic WordPress site on, on GoDaddy, you, it's out of our scope here, but basically you buy your Bluehost and then it's going to say install WordPress. You install WordPress, you're going to get a basic empty site, but you're going to have on that basic empty site tools import. And you're going to import the one that you're exporting here. That way you're not going to lose what you've done. Um, what about video sites? Are we going to come to that to insert videos? Yeah. Um, we've posted text, we've posted pictures, videos, very popular also. Becoming more popular. People like to see a quick video. It doesn't have to be a big professional video. Um, so actually, if you've never really worked with video, I'm going to show you right now how to add a video that's already been uploaded. To upload a, a, your own video, I can't quite do that, but I'll show you a video that's already been uploaded. Yeah, if you, a royalty-free video. Um, possibly, but let me finish my thought. So on, if you take the Friday uh, social media class this Friday, I don't remember if my class is full, so maybe I shouldn't be advertising it, but uh, this Friday I'm doing um, a, a one-day class on YouTube. It's part of my social media class. Uh, so this Friday, 9.30 a.m., up in room 209, I'm doing a one-day class on how to use YouTube, so how to create a YouTube account and how to make a video. So I'll be showing you there how to do that. So again, the best thing would be to upload your own photo, your own video, that sort of thing. I'm going to show you briefly adding a, a video from YouTube. And it might not be the most copyright-friendly way to do it, but my workflow would be, 
And what we're going to do on Friday is we're going to make our own video, upload it to a free YouTube account, and then we'll link it here. Because it doesn't make sense for you to upload your videos to your own site, to your own GoDaddy, to your own Bluehost. Is YouTube's public domain, so there's no cost no. or is it copyrighted? No, but let me finish my thought. So um, you, I would not recommend you upload your own videos to your own site because it's going to take up your bandwidth, it's, it's going to take up your server space, it's not quite worth it. I recommend to set up a free YouTube account and upload your videos to YouTube and then we'll just add the link and therefore YouTube is the one that is using the hard drive space and the internet connection and all of that. So let's say I wanted to find a video. I could go to youtube.com. On YouTube I have search, so I can search for how to blog. There's, an art, there's a video here, How to Start a Blog, Beginner's Guide. And how do you, how do you know which are public domain and which are illegal to uh, insert? Well, YouTube is kind of in the funny gray area because almost everything shared to video is sort of assumed that it's okay to share. Oh. Not technically that it's public domain or copyright free and such, but people that upload to YouTube they can turn on a button that says do not allow sharing and then you and can't the share biggest it. Oh, okay. If it doesn't have that though, then it's a free-for-all. Pretty much. So let's say I found this one, how to start a blog. I click to view, the, to view the video and there's a button right here, share. If people don't want you to share their video, they will not have that share button. So if I click share, it says would you like to share would you like the link? Would you like to share directly to Facebook, Twitter, Google+, etc., 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 etc.? Would you like to email this to someone? Would you like to embed it on your site? Normally, you would go to the embed, the embed um, option, but nowadays WordPress actually makes it so that all you need is the basic share link. There is a slight difference between the two. WordPress nowadays just accepts the basic share link. The embed link is a little more complicated because you would have to tell it what's your size and what's the background color and extra details. You can still check your extra details on embed, but the quickest way simply is just click share on the, on the video, on the first share box, copy that link, and then on my post, I can just paste paste and it's gonna look like a plain old weird link but once you publish it it'll then be the video it'll connect to YouTube it'll show you the thumbnail it'll be the real video you press play and it plays Is. I published it and then it's there's the video it's gonna play from my site this is what I'm saying don't worry about uploading your own Hi videos to your own site Today I have a highly requested your free video YouTube video guys, account and upload your videos there let them be saved blog, there which is always very let the connection the bandwidth Excuse be used the there sweaty face and, messy hair. It is really and all you have to do outside. on your blog posts um, is copy and paste the link to the video like and you've got a video kind of dying over here so <laughs> the sun is also shining directly kind of my way so just bear with me and I hope you guys will and enjoy the last, the last thing about video honestly I don't know I know a few sites for stock images like I'm showing you I don't know too many sites for stock videos stock videos are harder to come by I think because they're so much more time consuming anyone can snap a hundred photos and put them up for free stock images but to create a video that's I find a lot harder to find. So I usually, um, for my companies, we don't really use stock content that often. 
part of the job that we have with a company is to create the photos, to create the video. I know for, for, for you all then that might not be a, as much of an option. That's why I gave you uh, Pixabay and such for your stock images and for your video, really what you find on YouTube, the people want that to be seen, people want that to be shared. So if you don't have the share button, then they don't want it to be shared, so don't use that video. But if you can make your own videos, your own photos, that's going to be much better in the long term. It's your own content. And maybe your video gets shared on someone else's blog post. YouTube is becoming a very viable marketing platform, social media platform, and that's why in my social media class on Friday, now I've started to talk about YouTube. Because I want to create videos that get shared 413,000 times like that, or uh, viewed 413,000 times. And so there's still a few nuances here and there about blogging, but I think with this handout and these lectures, we've got plenty to start to work with. Part of this now relies on you. There's still details and technical aspects, but again, it's the content. What are you thinking of writing about? Are you going to be able to do it on a schedule? Are you going to have guest bloggers? Um, are you going to be able to do it 100 words at a time, 200 words? So based on what we've talked about today and the last time and this handout, I think you have the tools to start blogging. So as I said at the start of the class last week, this class relates to other classes that I teach. And so the more of these classes that you teach, uh, that you take, will uh, benefit you because the social media class is about sharing this, getting more traffic. Right now I've got zero views. No one knows that my blog exists. So with social media, I can get more traffic. Let's say eventually I want to maybe sell uh, tutorials, sell videos, sell goods and services. I have a class on setting up e-commerce with WordPress. And so, look in the catalog for my other classes, and they're starting all the time. Um, next month is a new semester. We're only a half month this month in the summer. So starting in the next month, there's going to be more of my classes, so you should look them up. But we're going to have lab time in just a moment. Overall, in these two weeks, I hope you managed to get information that you found useful. And... Um, uh, apply to your own endeavors.